All right, what I want to walk you through is how I added Bluetooth to my ground 3DR radio station. Um, let me power this off here so it doesn't wash out the video anymore. Um, starting off with the battery side of the house, um, what I have here is a um, recycled 2S battery I, I created out of um, old cell phone batteries, wired them in series, added the balancing plug. Um, works really nice for powering the unit however when I'm charging it the internal protection circuits <clears throat> seem to confuse my charger slightly and I'm only able to get anywhere from 200 to 100 milliamp charge rate um, which makes charging it take a little, lot longer than I expected um, but that's okay um, however when charging just through the balancing plug using a small e-flight battery charger it seems to charge a little bit faster um, so set that off to the side uh, just using standard the JST plugs um, you'll find on most 2S batteries I'm walking you through so as I go into here um, power comes in I added a voltage meter here uh, that way I can monitor the voltage of my battery packs um, so if I'm running a 2S battery uh, when I start getting down to lower range of seven volts or lo closer to six volts um, I know that I've gone that's time to pull the battery pack so it'll discharge them so it just gives you an overall idea of how much juice you have left in your packs um, going into a an eBay purchase just a constant voltage power supply um, will accept up to 30 volts right now suggested to output a constant five volts so no matter where I plug into it it should within reason produce five volts um, a little bit of variance in the voltage, but you're really talking less than a um, tenth of a volt either way from what I've observed so far. Um, on that, I've added a small LED. I had to put a power resistor in there. It was 5 volts to burn it up. But that just lets me know that I'm getting power through the unit. So the voltage meter lets me know I have power coming in. The LED lets me know it's coming out. Um, tracing the wires over. Here's my Bluetooth module. It's an HC05 off of eBay. Um, and you can see the power wires come around here and are soldered directly to the pins and then also this LED you see here is connected to the state pin on the Bluetooth module so it'll actually glow bright white um, when there's an active Bluetooth connection in addition to the LEDs that are on the board but at distance those could be hard to see um, then this plug, so I wanted to use a plug here so I can actually unplug the radio goes over here, carries power and the data wires over to my Bluetooth module or to my radio module. Now this radio module is a ground station so it's got the USB plug on it and I think it's got the CP201 um, serial converter, I believe that's the number, don't quote me. Um, So, but it doesn't have any serial connections to actually connect into like the, the um, air side does. So I did, did some wire tracing and found out that these two points right here, I was able to um, do a tap and add the wires directly to there um, to get a hold of that serial connection actually coming off of, I believe it's called an HW-TRP um, radio. Um, so capture that serial connection right there. And then I've got my 5 volts and my ground for the Bluetooth, or coming off of the Bluetooth here to power the whole unit. So I'm using the onboard um, power circuits on both boards. I convert 5 volts um, to 3.3, which is used by the actual modules. Um, majority of these radios I've seen actually on a breakout board similar to this Bluetooth module, um, which means you have slightly larger pins to attach to. Um, here is your TX and your RX. Um, if you have a breakout board, um, you'll have a row of pins going down through here. Um, and if you look on the back of the board, they're actually, well, it's hard to look on the back of your board. Um, they're labeled, let me pull one out here. Row two, three, four, five, six, seven pins going across the side there. Um, the first one will be a 3.3 volts. Um, the next one will be your TX, the next one will, about right in this location will be your ground, um, and then the last one will be your RX. Uh, much easier to tap. Um, you can look on Google and there's plenty of pinouts available there. 
Um, so then everything's just on double sided sticky tape to hold it in the case, some hot glue to hold the wires down. Um, and this case is actually just a very old playing card case that my wife had laying around, so more recycling. Um, but the, the nice part about this is I've got this module here on a little bit of Velcro. Uh, Velcro is a little stronger than I'd like, but that's okay. And I can unplug it, and then I can actually take this whole module and use it in my PC if I wanted to. It's just the regular Bluetooth or the regular USB version. Um, key thing is here: a little bit of hot glue on these wires creates a strain relief. Um, having played with doing taps like this before, if you move those wires too much, you'll rip your copper traces right off the circuit board, which will then pretty much render the board useless um, unless you can find another tap point and actually repair those traces which is usually a fruitless endeavor at best. So I want to just plug this back in. Obviously I have to pay attention to the way it's keyed. Otherwise I could wire plug it in backwards and fry everything. Um, so I might put a little bit less Velcro on there but I can just stick that back into here. Then I have my little case lid that fits nicely over top. Tighten down the antenna. And there you have it. Um, so you can see how bright that white light is. You open up a hyper terminal here real quick. Um, ideally, I'd want to use this with Mission Planner um, through my PC to send data back and forth to uh, the quadcopter I'll be building. Um, unfortunately, I can't get Mission Planner and PC to work. But, however, it does work relatively well on my Android devices. Um, so, we'll have to sort that one out yet. Um, but as you can see, that white light is growing, glowing nice and bright. Um, so when I drop the connection, it goes off. Um, then when I make the Bluetooth connection, it comes back on. You know, just useful, I should be able to see that light from a distance, kind of do, do some diagnostics. So if I know whether it's the radio or the Bluetooth module. Um, but that is it. Took me an evening to build. Um, kind of tell you all the parts cost, but each one of those modules probably about five bucks a dollar for the voltage meter battery was recycled so hmm, we'll call it 20 bucks all said and done um, and it should work pretty nice out in the field